Greetings YouTube. In this video we'll be making orange glow-in-the-dark powder. We have a whole lot to cover so let's dive right in. To begin with you'll need the following chemicals. 50 grams of calcium sulfate reagent grade. 15 grams of sugar 0.1 gram of manganese chloride. We made this in a previous video. If it has any water in it, or if it has a dark pink color, you need to put it on a watch glass and then put it on a hot plate on high heat until it turns white. You must get all the water out of it. You'll need 0.25 grams of sodium chloride and 1 gram of sodium carbonate. You'll also need a mortar and pestle to grind them all together. Place everything but the calcium sulfate in the mortar and grind them together into a powder. The better you grind them together now, the better the end result. All of these chemicals must be weighed exactly and must be very, very pure. Unfortunately, there can be no substituting with store-bought calcium sulfate. I'm sure someone is thinking they can just go get a piece of sheetrock or some plaster of Paris. No, I tried this. It did not work. You must get high quality calcium sulfate. It does not have to be anhydrous, but it does have to be reagent grade for this to work. So here's what mine looked like after a few minutes of grinding. Now let's add about a third of the calcium sulfate to the mortar and start grinding again. After a couple of minutes, you can add in the rest of the calcium sulfate. I found that grinding all this together to be a difficult method of mixing, so I decided to use a Ziploc bag to be sure that everything was mixed together well. The calcium sulfate likes to form clumps, and you need to be sure to break all of them up. It is extremely important that everything be mixed together evenly. Any clumps of any chemical will result in dark spots in the final product. I've tried this reaction about six times and only get results with high purity chemicals and good mixing. Now we need to heat our mixture red hot. I will show you two different ways to do this. The first is to load some of the mixture in a small culture tube and heat with a torch. I'll be honest, this does not give the best results. I find that it works only about half the time and when it does work only small pieces glow while the rest is dark. If you do choose to do it this way be sure that you heat it for at least 30 minutes. Also be sure that you do this outside as using a gas torch gives off large amounts of CO2. When you're done let it cool and then break the glass at the bottom and try not to contaminate with all the black particles from the top. If you test the powder and get nothing, then you more than likely did not reach the temperature needed to fuse everything together. For the next method, you'll need a porcelain crucible. Place it in the Ziploc bag and start packing it with the mixture. Use as much pressure as possible to pack it without breaking the crucible. Once you are done, Remove the crucible and add a lid. The second method of heating is much more reliable and gives larger amounts of product than the previous. However, it will require one of these. This is a metal forge and will have no problem getting this small crucible red hot. I have modified it so the back opening is closed and once the crucible is loaded I close off part of the front. If you use one of these or a kiln, then you'll need to be sure the crucible is red hot for at least 30 minutes. After you're done, let the crucible cool before you begin removing what's inside. When you do start removing your product, try not to break any of the large fused chunks. While the video is about making powder, you'll find that the large chunks glow the best and the longest. Powdering them reduces the effect to some degree, since you mix in all the dark spots. So here's what I produced. Let's go ahead and test it. First grab your UV light 
and set it on top of the product for a few seconds to fully charge it. And once again, my camera fails me as the effect lasts longer than what the camera picks up. After I remove the light, it does die down to a point. Then it stays at that point for about three to four minutes before it starts going completely dark. Since my video camera could not capture this, I took some still photos to better show the effect and also what it looks like under high quality black light. If you try this experiment and have better luck getting it to show up on video, please post a video response. Thanks for watching.